to give this op option to all of you as just a resource to utilize. So we're gonna dive in now to the Paying for College Toolkit. Um, like I said a minute ago, uh, I probably won't be taking the full hour that we have scheduled. I'm probably gonna take a half hour. I was thinking about doing an activity, but then I thought, you know what, let's just let our educators get back to work, right? Um, so we're gonna just go for it. Um, today we're gonna talk about, like we've already discussed briefly, what are ways students can pay for college? We're gonna talk about what is the purpose of this toolkit? Why did it come about? And then we're going to dive into it. We're, I'm going to show it to you. You're going to get access to it immediately. You'll be able to play around with it, et cetera. Um, and then at the end, we'll wrap up with just discussing some different ways you can utilize this in your paying for college resources, trainings, um, not uh, presentations, because this is all geared towards students and parents. And then if you have any questions, I know I got a Q&A section at the end, but if you have questions, please ask during. Um, I want to make sure we're hitting on all your questions. And so let's dive right in. Um, just to hit the basics for some of those that um, may be newer, uh, we have this paying for college kind of order of operations and order of which we try to push different items to students. And we definitely want to start with the first, which is free money and nearly free resources. So items such as scholarships or grants that students do not have to pay back. Um, and those do depend on, you know, applications and you know, need-based, et cetera, with the grants and what you qualify for, et cetera. We definitely want to push students to you utilizing nearly free resources while they're in high school, such as concurrent enrollment, AP, international baccalaureate, or dual enrollment type courses, so they can get those credits early on without um, too much of a hassle to have to, having to pay that back or pay for that while out of pocket while they're in college. Um, and then, of course, uh, we want to inform them about earning money, such as work study or other types of employment, um, saving money, such as 529s, credit unions, or bank accounts. And lastly, we definitely want this to be a last resort, but we do at the same time want to meaningfully inform students because some might end up utilizing this. Um, some may go on to professional degrees that they only have access to borrowing money. And so we want to make sure they're meaningfully informed early on. And so we do recommend using federal student loans over private just because of the benefits that it comes with it. Um, but yeah, that's the basics there. So some steps students can take to pay for college. This is kind of some action items for them. Um, many of you are very aware of this, but they can apply for scholarships. Um, you know, we've got a lot of scholarship opportunities in the state from our colleges or even private scholarships. Filing the FAFSA, um, if you don't know this already, the FAFSA has been delayed this year and students won't be able to file it until December, at least our seniors won't. And then the following year, we should go back to normal of it opening in October. So, so grants, work study, student loans that, have, that give students access to those, as well as some scholarship requirements. Um, Students may work and may need to work while in college or beforehand. Um, so working is a good way to, to push information to students about that. Same thing with saving, um, informing them on different items there. So that's another action item. And then finding other ways for them to really cut costs while in college. I mean, I had many different ways that I figure out how to cut costs, especially with food. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do another poll here. Sorry, it's not slipping over. What are some unique ways you or your students have paid for college or cut college costs? I'm curious to see. And Christian, could you drop in the um, poll everywhere information again? Let me open that QR code again. There we go. What are some unique ways you or your students have paid for college or cut college costs? While I was in college, there were, at least my freshman year, there were some different organizations that provided free food that we would get like every week. So participate in student government. Yes, that was a very unique one. I like that. Not all students are kind of like set for that, right? But there's a lot of great opportunities for those that are really into the leadership side of the ambassadors, student ambassadors. Yep. Find free food. I love that. Give letter plasma. <laughs> yep, that's another way. Probably not applicable to all students, depending on their body, but yeah, that's a great one. CE courses, food pantry, be married. 
Okay, I see how it goes. That's I actually did that. I not on purpose to for college purposes, but I did get married while I was in college, and it did change the game. Grocery shop and parents' pantry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Side hustles. Love it. Love these unique ways. Oh, I tried to scroll so like I can see more, but I guess it doesn't want to. Attend school where parent works so they can get a discount. Yep. And there's some even alumni um, type opportunities for some particular colleges. In the chat, I saw Sterling Scholar. That's another great way to pay for college. For all books from the library. Yes. Y'all are super informed. Like, I have a lot of information on this. This is great. Getting a certificate from a technical college, even if it's unrelated. Yeah, that's a great way to even like get started. Or if I have a job while you're going to, you know, further education. Scan textbooks, sell by book textbooks on the black market. <laughs> <Put that. laughs> okay, uh, let's go ahead and dive into this some more. I don't want to take too much out of your day. Um, so the purpose of this toolkit, and thank you for all of those that participated. That was pretty funny. Um, there are so, so many different ways that you can pay for college and cut paid college costs. And I have included some of the items you actually listed in there in this toolkit. Um, but the purpose of this toolkit to really dive into the context of where it came to be. In 2021, the Paying for College Guide was discontinued, many, as many of you know. Um, its information was actually dispersed into um, our different manuals and documents, such as the College Guide, the FAFSA manual, et cetera. And so it wasn't, there wasn't like a main place for all that information. And many of our school counselors and others expressed their sadness that the Paying for College Guide was discontinued. We have listened to you all, and that's one of the main reasons why this toolkit is now available. In addition, in 2021, former UHE employees moved out of the office, of, moved to the office of the commissioner, and because of that, there were no longer um, different presentations available from that office, um, just because of resources and such. So um, there's been a, a lot less provided when it comes to presentations about paying for college or FAFSA requested by schools, and um, so I wanted to be able to provide something that you could all utilize easily and have material ready. So combining this need of that resource and removing all that work to create materials, um, that's why the Paying for College Toolkit was developed. So it's basically just here to help you all. Now, keep in mind also with this, this toolkit isn't to replace anything that you've already developed. I know you're all professionals. You have great ways of presenting, providing material, et cetera. This is just something to aid you, to help you in that process, to maybe help provide different information, et cetera. Um, so don't use this as something that's, you know, the silver bullet, right? You have your materials. Please continue to use those. Just utilize this as needed. So here we go. Let's dive in. But this is the Paying for College Toolkit. Um, the toolkit consists of seven PowerPoint presentations. Um, there's the full presentation that has all the information in one spot. There's also the simplified version that, you know, it's good for presenting if you want to just cover the basics of general paying for college items. Um, then from there, there are five individual sections separated out. And we have what I've called and my team have called the paying for college student bundle of those different sections. Um, it's called that because um, think of a stick. If you have a, a student or you with a stick and you try to break a stick, it's pretty easy to break, right? Now, if you have a bundle of sticks, that it's a lot harder. And to apply that to students and their paying for college options, the more they try to access different resources, um, the easier it is it's gonna be for them to possibly pay for college in the end, right? So we recommend that students go in and use these action items that I have listed here in this bundle. So apply for scholarships, file the FAFSA, earn and save, um, creative ways to cut their costs while in college and before, and then, of course, there's some individual student situations that depend on, you know, the student, right, that can be paired with some of these different um, topics. In addition to the presentations, there, this toolkit has seven printable handouts to accompany those presentations. Um, so there's one for each of the, the main sections, which is scholarships, FAFSA, earn and save, and then cut costs. And then we have three of them for our individual student situations. So we have deferment, dreamers and immigrants, and students with disability. This is definitely great to help you in your developing and providing that information out to students and families, um, just to get that information out. 
The toolkit also consists of four accompanying videos, short videos. So right now we just have four, so scholarships, FAFSA, earn and save and cut costs. Um, in the future, we may have the option for um, those individual student situations, um, but this is just to aid you and aid whoever and provide more information, right, for these different topics. In addition, there are 13 older short videos that we have that are available if you want to, you know, kind of play those as well. Um, and those are in each of the presentations. So you just clickable links that you can jump into. And you can find all these videos on our YouTube. Christian, if you could grab the YouTube link and drop it in the chat, that'd be awesome. So with that being said, I kind of flew through that. Um, let's check out the toolkit. You're going to want to go to yushi.edu to find it. I'm going to show you where to find it. Um, I'm pull up Yushi .edu. If you want to just watch this for a second and then go to it so you know how to get there, many of you already know our website, so this might be an easy thing to do. But for those that don't, I want to make sure they know how to find it easily. So once you get to the website itself, you're going to hover over initiatives, don't click on it. And then go down to K through 12 outreach. And then there should be a tab for Utah College Application and Financial Aid Resources. That's where you're going to click on. So hover over initiatives, go down to K through 12 outreach, and then click on that Utah College Application and Financial Aid Resources. Once you're in there, you're going to see a tab. Let me go ahead and click on that. If I need to go back and do that again, let me know. Um, once you're in our that web page, you're going to scroll down. There's going to be some UCOT information. And then there's going to be a tab called the Pink College Toolkit. Here's where all the information is available. All of this currently is in English. But keep in mind, um, we are working tirelessly. I should say Christian Simonson is working tirelessly um, on making this all available in Spanish. So we're soon to have the presentations available in Spanish then the handouts. Um, the videos will probably come later on, but um, we want to make sure you, you're able to provide this information to our families that um, may have that Spanish speaking as a first language. So in this toolkit, um, if you click on the actual word, that's going to be the PowerPoint download. So I would not recommend clicking pay for college full presentation right now because it'll take about 20 minutes because it's a big presentation. Um, I'm going to click on the PDF version, but this is the full presentation that you can go in and explore. Um, it starts out with, you know, just the basics. What is college? This was actually a recommendation from USBE um, to kind of dive in because we want to make sure students understand that what we're talking about today is applicable to all college situations. So making sure that students are aware of that so they don't kind of blank out if they're like, I'm just going to my local technical college or I'm going to go to the trade school. This doesn't apply. No, this is all applicable. And same with whatever type of degree they have. And we just really want to push that one, two, four or more type um, language, right? Um, some basics on how much does college actually cost. We've got some information here for Utah on how much uh, tuition and fees are uh, in comparison to out-of-state averages, as well as private nonprofit averages. So you can kind of give them idea to kind of say, hey, here's the, here's the big elephant in the room. How much does college actually cost? We have the facts at a glance. This was a recommendation by school counselors um, to add this in here. And this is a clickable link that you can just click on and it'll take you right over to the facts at a glance on our website that you can print out. So pretty easy there. And I recommend, I know this isn't listed in the list of handouts, but this should be a, you know, provided in all situations, right? Um, just so students can explore their different options. Going back to the toolkit here. And then you kind of have them dive into, where should I start as a student when it comes to paying for college? And this is where the student bundle is introduced. And you can get them started from there. Then it dives into each one of these sections, starting with applying for scholarships. And it's just got slides here with basic information. I'm just gonna go through this one, um, but we've got who provides scholarships, common types of scholarships. So very basic, right? Where to begin searching and those different uh, places to search. Um, if you want to utilize the video that's associated with this portion, you can click on the YouTube link or the download icon here, and that'll jump you right over to where that is. And then you can dive into the, the information in more detail if you want to. At the end of each section, there's going to be the video resources to those if, they're have, if they have actual video resources. And these are the older videos um, that you're welcome to share with students. 
Some of them are a little outdated, like the FAFSA one, especially for the school year, um, just because dates have changed and, you know, it's got like EFC in there instead of SAI. But um, for the most part, they should be pretty evergreen. To go back to the toolkit, you can come over here. Um, on the second section, we have, we have all the handouts. I'm going to just pull up in the, the FAFSA one on the PDF on here. It's great. Um, it's got all the information that was provided inside that presentation portion. So students and families can take this away. You can even use this to talk to students and parents, right? Um, they can highlight, make notes, et cetera. I know this one's pretty full, but um, you can make notes on the back. Uh, scan for, the, they have, there's the video as well that's associated with this. They can scan and watch that on their phone for later time period. So then they have access to everything up front. And we've got information for, I know this, I noticed that this one's a little off. So you may have to return back. So I'm going to follow up with this one. But for our dreamers, immigrant, immigrants, and international students, excuse me, it's got terminology, some frequently asked questions and some different resources, um, such as like Passport 144, and you know where to go find more information, such as our dream centers. And then each presentation is split up, like I said, um, into the various topics, let's do the earn and save here. And so that they can go in, if, if you have other presenters that wanna dive into just a specific topic, or if you wanna go pre present on a specific topic, you can do so, and it's just split up already for you. You can add whatever you want to these to the downloads if you've got your material, like I said, and insert in here. You can copy and paste some of these and put them into your presentations, et cetera. And then of course, we've got the different videos. I'm gonna go ahead and play one of the videos. I'll just make sure my audio is working. And they're just short, brief videos. Anywhere from two to three minutes. Or Zoom is making my computer a little bit slower. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, Bob. Calling all high school students in search of scholarships to fund their college education. Here are some simple steps to get started. Step one, ask the high school counseling or guidance office. They're the go-to resource for scholarship information. Hi, Ms. Johnson. I'm looking for scholarships. Can you help me? Of course, Alex. We have a list of scholarships and can guide you through the application process. Step two, apply through your college or university. Many institutions offer scholarships specifically for their students just for applying. Step three, explore employer-sponsored tuition options. Some companies provide benefits for education, such as tuition reduction, tuition reimbursement, and scholarship opportunities to employees and their children. Mom, Dad, have you checked if your company offers tuition benefits or scholarships? That's a great idea, Alex. We'll look into it right away. Step four, explore community scholarships. Many organizations, foundations, and local businesses offer scholarships. Community scholarships can increase chances of earning an award compared to national scholarships with thousands of applicants nationwide. Step five, Search for scholarships online. There are numerous scholarship search engines and databases to help you find opportunities. Take the time to apply to smaller scholarships because they can reduce out-of-pocket costs. And finally, don't forget step six, file the FAFSA. The free application for federal student aid helps determine eligibility for financial aid and may be required to apply to many scholarships. Keep in mind the FAFSA is usually completed by high school seniors. Remember, scholarships can make a big difference in funding your education. Take advantage of these steps to maximize your chances of securing financial support for college. Good luck and have a successful scholarship search. And it's got links to the other videos there as well. So that's just like one of the examples. The other ones are a little bit longer than that, they're about three-ish minutes, but um... As you can tell, it's pretty quick. It's your information fairly fast, and hopefully, it's applicable to the students, right? Um, great question that came up in the in the chat here. There are this our website. Just keep in mind, a lot of things are being updated. 
all the FAFSA items down below are going to be a little bit um, outdated because we don't have a lot of that material ready or available yet from even the government. So, um, and then the, the UCAW resources should be updated here in the near future. Um, I just keep an eye on it. If you do have questions, I would email Lisa Molina. Um, and uh, Christian, if you could throw Lisa's email in the chat, that'd be great. So that's our toolkit. I wanna go back to the presentation and just cover briefly um, just some different ideas that you how to utilize this. So those that are advisors or um, counselors that are meeting students individually one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, you can use this in your PCCRs. You could quickly share a slide or some of the slides or cover a whole topic on your computer screen or associate TV. Um, you could have a handouts ready to go so you can talk to the students and families about the handouts. They can write notes, you can highlight different things, you can put you know, deadlines, et cetera, and they can take that away with them. For those that are like teachers or any of the youth who provide like classroom presentations, you could you know, present with some of these different presentations. You could do the simplified version for a quick 20 to 30 minute type class situation. And if you want to go bigger, if there's like you have longer class periods, you could go with like the full presentation. There's a lot of info in there though. So I would definitely plan it out. Um, or you could even focus on one individual se uh, section from the toolkit. Um, you can have the handouts ready to go that are printed for the students to take with them, especially those topics that you really want to focus on. And if you want another voice, you could have the videos available to play or even play them afterwards at the end just to really helping bring that information to the students. Um, this is one of my bigger ideas that I've been thinking about a lot lately is a paying for college workshop or family evening event. Um, you could really host a full event with all this information. Uh, you could have a kickoff at the beginning with like an introduction right to what's going on for the day and maybe present like the first eight slides. Um, the ones that I kind of showed you at the beginning before the apply for scholarships, just to talk about, you know, what is college? One, two, four or more. Um, how much is college going to cost, et cetera. And then you could have the five different sections into different breakout presentations where you have different presenters provide that information. You could have the handouts printed out for each one of those rooms. Um, you know, your presenters can use the videos to watch and it could help you to find presenters because I know sometimes that's a really stressful part of that for those that do kind of host these bigger events because you can just basically say, hey, I've got the information ready to go. Um, here's the material and this is what we want you to cover. And if they want to add to it, awesome. Um, they can do whatever they want with that information and then provide that information moving forward. So you just make it easier for everybody, right? Um, lunchtime activities or school news, if you want to utilize the handouts um, with just handing out during, you know, lunchtime, um, you could have the videos playing during school news time period, etc. You could do activities like trivia, scholarship activities, work on the FSA ID creation for our seniors, etc. during those time periods too. This was a really cool idea from actually my supervisor, my boss, um, which was a social media campaign. Um, you could do a five week, a five month type campaign that discusses some of these different items in your social media. So for example, with that monthly idea down below, um, January, you could talk about just scholarships and each week have one post for, you know, different ways to search for scholarships, different tips, et cetera. February, you talk about FAFSA. Um, March, earn and save, April, creative ways. And then May, just have a quick review of like what you've been talking about for the school year. So a pretty awesome idea there. Um, you've got the material, you can even like just copy some of the slides over um, or the material into however you want to design it, et cetera. So that's all I have for today. Um, that's the toolkit. There's your introduction. Um, keep in mind, we've got the Spanish version coming out in the near future. Um, and I'm hoping uh, that we'll, we'll send this out to all of you once it is available. And possible future videos, et cetera. So any questions? Thank you. Yeah, there's no questions. Um, you can definitely have your, your time back. For any of these, any of you that joined a little late, um, we will have this recorded and, or it is being recorded and it'll be posted. Um, and be given to you here later today or tomorrow. So thank you all for attending today. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. If there's items in here that you are like, 
this needs to be updated or we would love to see this in here. Um, future editions can be definitely available. Uh, so yeah, thank you and have a great day, everybody.